My name's Dan. It's DD Speed Shop. And we're gonna hack up this fine four door and make a two door conversion out of it. It is 737. I, Danny has to be playing video games at eight o'clock. So hopefully I can get this done in 25 minutes. Now, I've done a few of these. People always kind of ask. We're gonna just film the whole mess. Tri-5 Chevys are the exact same four door and two door in the uh, kind of cabin area. So there's no goofiness to it. It will be a two door. Now, the way I'm gonna do is a little bit cheating. We're gonna use two door doors. You can make your own doors out of four doors by lengthening them, doing all that stuff if you want. I recommend this way, it's a lot easier. A good set of two door doors, 500 bucks. That's what's gonna set you back. We're doing it in this small garage. We have a Chinese welder we'll be using, not right away. Sawzall, zip disc will be your friend. Floor jack, block of wood, that's about it. We're not taking out a tape measure, we're not screwing around, we're cutting it and we're gonna be over with it. Now, step one is take off your door, which is right there. I've already done that, it's six bolts. I'm sure, if you're gonna tackle this project, you can figure that out. The next step is removing the back door, which endlessly is a hassle in my life. So what we're actually gonna do is probably just zip disc it right off. Oh, maybe not. I think it's been a while since I did this. Um, let's get the Sawzall or something like that. We're gonna cut the door off. So this will be a little bit of lapsing. And it's loud and annoying. These doors are bolted on, but they use Phillips head screws. They're never gonna come out. And you don't need the hinge anymore. You only need a front hinge. Ugh. Off. Problem solved. So now, a lot of this can take a lot longer if you care. You can reuse this four-door post. So simply what we're going to do, because the opening is the exact same in a two-door and a four-door, the only difference in a two-door, the door is six inches longer, and then obviously this back section doesn't have a door. So I've done it a couple different ways. You can just cut this post out, move it back, weld it, re-weld it, that door will go on and you're, you're uh, dialed. In this case, I bought a, uh, a guy who had cut up a car. So I'll show you that down the road a little bit here. We're actually gonna use sections of a real two door. By far the best way of doing it, but again, more money. So I paid 700 bucks for doors and the rear section, which has glass and regulators, which is nice. So this will be a real two door as far as I'm concerned. Go for it. See you later. Neighbors. They love tri fives. Now, this post. Oh, the seat's going to be a pain in the ass. Um, probably want to watch your interior. This post is spot welded in, so you can drill all the welds out and take it out. I'm not doing that. Dead blow because it's a body hammer, you know. Don't want to damage anything. we are. 
So we've taken a perfectly good four-door car and completely ruined it. So now what we're gonna do, I need this, my dear. We're gonna put the two-door on. How are we doing for time? Seven forty-eight. We're killing it. So there's a couple different ways to do this. It's got a cap on it. it. Wouldn't it? Probably wouldn't explode. We're gonna use the floor jack and a block of wood to support the door a little. Now, when I've done lots, I may have to borrow Danny for it, but I'm gonna close the door. You'll set your gaps. Then you can just get in and zing it together. Obviously, we're gonna have to weld that up. This is just kind of the absolute Looney Tune basics here. I also recommend these doors are heavy when they're full of glass. Let's see if we can weasel this in. So we're not going to use that block of wood, I guess. Usually Danny's running the floor jacket this time, not holding the camera. We're close. See the bottom. Okay. There we go. It's a two door. So there's six bolts. I'm just gonna get them started real quick. That's pretty boring. And then once it's uh, started, we'll close the door. Just clamp it where we have to do. Set our gap. Lock them down. Be right back. So the door's on. This is the frustrating part, getting everything lined up. But the door's loose, obviously. So it's hanging down. Lift it up. Close it. Make sure your gaps are decent. Now, what we have here is a bit of a lower situation. The pry bar, we can pop her back. So you want to set your gaps 100% perfect, right? So this jam. Couple in there if we can. Okay, so close ish. Where do I put my clamp? This is where we're gonna kind of hillbilly it together. Close the door. Close the door. And we're just gonna vice grip it. I feel like that fender's a little bit a little bit ligament. Oh. Gentle. Come on, girl. You know you want a lock on there. It doesn't. These tri fives are touchy. The problem is there's a headliner in this thing. There we go. Stay. How are we doing up front here? So, I actually, in this case, the, the fender is high, I think, because we're lined up here. This door gap's pretty decent. So this is straight here, but this down here is buck she, as my old man would call it. And if you look here, we have, the door might be able to go up just a little bit, but it's pretty, not too bad. What we got down there? Ooh, it's a little tight. We might need a paint stick on the bottom, actually. Just to make sure it's perfect. So I'll re we'll reset and be right back. So I just kind of jammed the bar in there. It's not too bad now. So let's go on the other side. Zing those bolts tight. I don't think the fenders are adjusted properly on this car.
installed. So now, oh yeah, paint sticks. How are we getting those out? Need a tool. Not bad. So now we can adjust the height a little bit. But it's a two door. Now, this is about where I'm gonna take a break because I'm tired and hot. Did we make the deadline? What time is it? My phone died. I was using it as a flashlight. 8.05. It's not on. 8.05, it's dead. Not bad, not bad, 30 minutes. Um, the next thing I would do, if you're gonna reuse the four door post, the super simple, you, you gotta clean all the metal up that you've left in here, obviously. But I would simply latch them together and then you shut the door and that's where your post is gonna be. So you're gonna set your door gap, very, very simple. We're not gonna do that on this episode or this uh, build, I should say, because we're gonna use the proper two-door stuff. So that's that. Now the next thing you would do, and we'll probably use part of this door as a patch panel. Ugh. We're gonna take this back glass out, zip this pillar out so that's gone, um, cut a bunch of inner structure out so the back seat is gonna have to come out. But you can see now, if we line up the back door, is that about right? We've got kind of this much extra space. Oh, somebody really bent the door there. Luckily that's the section we're gonna come off. We're basically gonna skin the rear door and use it as a patch panel and weld it in the new post. We'll use the top section, obviously that'll all fit in there and put a piece of glass in. And it's a freaking two door. 30 minutes and you're done. 30 minutes or it's free or something like that. I think that's why I named one of these. So, uh, I mean, that's, we did this in a half hour. The post, that's a little bit of screwing around. And, and I will say, I kind of, I rushed the door to be fit. Spent a little bit of time. Everything's adjustable except the door post. So I might spend a little bit of time and adjust this fender, make the door fit a little bit better, go back and forth when you're, you know, just kind of doing your own thing. but. This door can tilt up just a little bit and go ahead just a little, but not, not bad. Post in and then a lot of screwing around with the back. As for the inner structure, obviously there's gonna be some. You're gonna use the door as well. So we're gonna split the door right in half, trim it down, make the outside skin and the inside structure. I always do the inside last because it looks cool and you have it all together. But there you are. This thing immediately looks a thousand times better. I bought this yesterday at eight o'clock I came home and today it's eight o'clock. So 24 hours later, we've actually done some you know, little tweaks to it. Hopefully you've watched the other video on this thing and you can see immediately how cool you can make this thing with very little money and uh, not a lot of time. I'm taking a break, I'm sweaty. Be back in a bit. Well, it's a new day in the shop. I know we jammed hard to get this kind of done in a short amount of time. So we're like an hour into this thing. Now, we're gonna slow her down a little bit and take our time and I'll kind of explain a little more and get this dialed together. So we have the door on, obviously now we have to fill in this back space. So step one will be pull this back glass out. We'll cut this post out, uh, just that section right there, which will be fine. Now what we have, so we have a two door section. So obviously, I mean, if the post lines up with the door, then we'll just have to cut back here. Now, this has a bit of a plays your eye a little bit. This is a Pontiac, Canadian Pontiac quarter panel. So you think it looks like it's kind of goofy. It's just, those are his trim lines. The uh, stamp doesn't start till back here. And obviously we're gonna be, you know, however much ahead of the wheel, you'll kind of do like a jog like that. So we're gonna try and use as much of this panel as possible. Now that being said, the bottom down here is pretty ugly. It looks like someone just 
kind of welded a piece of steel on top and loaded it full of filler. Real DD Speed Shop hack job. So I'm thinking I'll probably end up trimming this panel. I'll probably come across here. We'll keep the top section. Uh, we're obviously gonna, you know, and then go down and keep the whole post as much as we possibly can because that's gonna be important stuff. And then we'll kind of start fitting that. Uh, I'm gonna flip it on its backside. We're gonna cut all the inner structure out, take the glass out. We have to cut the roof section out. And we'll probably slice it, you know, here or so because we're just gonna blend into the uh, existing stuff. There's no point using this whole back section, you know. Now, you can, don't get me wrong. If you wanted to, you could continue cutting this car up and put all this two-door stuff in there and then it would be really hard to tell. Like if you had a wrecked two-door or a rusty two-door and a good four-door, you can absolutely take everything apart, drill spot welds, all that sort of stuff and put it together and it would be pretty hard to tell the difference. We're not trying to accomplish that. This is a dirt cheap, fun, let's put a, a week's worth of time into it, you know, change the wheels and tires, do a few things, paint it black and blast around. So that's where we're going with it. Dirt cheap, fun, end of season car. Um, I probably will just glue the glass in. That's what I do, that's what I did on Danny's car. This is her 57. Oh, we got the exposure dead wrong. But this one I did just with four door parts. It'll look roughly the same. So I think we're gonna get set up and I'm gonna start cutting everything out of the backside. Get all that junk out. Then we have to, like I said, cut all in here out, get the roof section off. It's a good piece, but there's a lot of screw around. And then as for the bottom panel, we'll probably cut that out. We'll just use the bottom of the door. Now I know the front of the door is bent, don't worry. We have to use the back section anyways. Cause remember we took the space out of the six inches here. So we use the back section, then we can move the trim over. We're all kind of taken care of. Two door. So that was 14 minutes of time lapse. I don't know how long it'll be on the old video there, but uh, that's how long it took me and like a bunch of zip disks and some batteries. But now you can kind of see the doors just kind of sitting there. Obviously we have the post just kind of sitting there. Nothing is perfect, but from a dimensional, you know, thing, uh, you know, we're basically in line. That's within, you know, whatever, a half an inch or so, but you can see that the whole thing is kind of kicked out. Clearly it's not going to fit because it's, you know, there's stuff to fit on top of there. Now, when I cut this out, I did it in a few different bits. We kept the back section with all the mechanisms so that can be reinstalled if we so choose. This section here can all be reused. So if you want to put your headliner bows and all that in, 
that's just fine. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat because that's what we do around here. We're gonna leave all the four door stuff in and uh, you know, we'll trim some of it out here as we go. But the headliner's in it, it's fine. It looks good, I don't wanna screw with it. And uh, it'll be okay. We're gonna lose some of the structure in the back. This is just gonna be kind of like a facing piece versus if you look here, it's like three or four pieces of metal all stitched together, which you can take apart, very tedious. But we're gonna leave that, or we're just gonna use like I said, the facing piece and just use the existing four door stuff because that's very strong. So this one is lipstick on a pig for sure. Um, so and then obviously I'm gonna join it, you know, in this area. We'll cut this kind of section off. We can then weld it, you know, into where the door's gonna close, and then we'll have to build one little patch panel at the bottom, which we'll end up using scraps from the door. We also have to fix the. Uh, the rocker and stuff like that but there you are that's kind of the nuts and bolts of it lots of screwing around to be done at this point um, again the back section is gonna be welded in so that is once it's in it's not really too adjustable you want to make sure your door is fitting pretty good typically tripods are very tight in this area right here then we can adjust the fender and kind of go from there but it's time to recharge all of the batteries because everything is dead and uh, you know take a minute to myself have a little break We'll come back out and we'll start trimming this up. Um, here, it's a bit of a funny cut, but again, there was it was double layer. You actually still see the back there. This was obviously rotted out. They just put a panel over it, buzzed it in. It's brazed, actually. They brazed it in and then just loaded it with filler. Luckily, this thing's actually, the dog leg is pretty strong. They always rot out on these Tri-5 Chevys. So that's actually gonna save us a bunch of work. So anyways, by the end of the day, it'll be a stitched together three door. Oh, start on the passenger side. That way you make mistakes, you don't gotta look every day when you get into the car. Okay, so we're a little ways in the future. I did a little screw around and I just have the door adjusted uh, where I am. Slam, I'm pretty happy with it. We got a decent little gap. Might run uphill just a little tiny, tiny bit, but you know what, it's, it's pretty good. It's real flush right there, which I like. We have a nice gap uh, to the fender. So it opens and closes, has no screw around. And then the bottom, we have lots of room down there. So nothing rubs, that's golden. Next, we're gonna go ahead and fill in these little bits here. So obviously we cut those out of the old post. All I did was just took a piece of scrap. I put a little bend in it and then I'm just literally gonna hold it up. This is obviously backwards, but hold it up to where I want, cut it out, make a little box out of it and then weld that in because the post has to uh, go back. So the post will be somewhere back here in that area, but the front of the post will actually, you know, want to probably be welded somewhere like that. And obviously you got to fill that in. You can't just leave a big gaping hole. So we're gonna do that real quick. This is kind of crude. Um, again, we'll weld it in half of it. You won't even see in the front half. We'll, we'll body, body work later. And once we have that under control, then we can start attacking that giant piece of monstrosity Tri-5 Chevy piece, which looks all kind of goofy and misproportioned right now. But as we cut and fit it, what I tip typically will do is we're going to just blindly cut it, uh, get some of the junk off. I'll actually latch the door to it and we'll close everything. We'll weld the post in, then we'll just kind of push it back and get everything kind of tacked into place. And it'll, you'll have to trust me, but it'll start looking like a Tri-5 Chevy two-door, like in a frickin' hurry. Frankenstein, but in a hurry.
So I got the, the plates welded in, you saw that. We just kind of have the panel sitting there, so it's getting there. Uh, what I did, like I said, I literally latched the post together so the doors fit, the post is it's all one piece, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that in there wherever I kind of think it's gonna be, give her a, a mark or a tack weld or something like that. We'll open the door. That'll be kind of close. Back here, obviously, we gotta essentially kind of cut to match where the door's gonna be, so we'll zing it there and zing it there. And once we get this section out that's all kind of ribbed, even if we have just this flat sheet metal, it'll fit on over top. It'll like, it'll layer over it, which will be fine. But right now we can't go any further because it's all, all this junk. So we're gonna get that cut out. I might do a little trim in there too, actually, but we'll get that all trimmed out so we can kind of push it back where we want it. And then, you know, we can tack weld whatever we have to do and kind of carry on. But the post is your biggest issue. So we'll want to make sure the thing is kind of fit in there. At the back, I mean, if we cut it too short or too long, well, obviously we have lots of material here we can add to, subtract, whatever it may be, and, and go from there. Here, same thing, I'll probably just kind of sharpie it or do whatever I have to do, zip cut it, push it in, we'll tack it as it goes down, and then all we're left is that gaping hole, but we have the patch panel right there. So that's the plan. We'll get the camera set up and maybe I'll, maybe I'll talk through it while I'm doing it. I'm just going to wing it. So. Bear in mind, there's not a whole lot of training here. This is not a how-to, it's just how I'm doing it. So I got the muffs on, so hopefully this will be able to hear everything okay, but we're just gonna go ahead and uh, that's a filler there. Make this so she's weldable. Get kind of set up. Let's turn the welder on amateur hour today so that's kind of about where we're gonna want this thing let's give her a quick little buzz the trick is just close your eye okay so that's not really gonna go anywhere I'm gonna open and close the door ish Give this a quick little buzz as well. This can all be adjusted, but we're in the ballpark. Okay. Now we're gonna blindly cut this. Ish. Same but different. So obviously we have, there's still some fine trimming to be done. This is all just loose and we got it just kind of clamped. It's got a big kind of crease so the panel doesn't fit quite as nice as you'd like, but close issue. I mean, the window opening is not bad. Obviously welding and grinding fixes lots, but look at this door gap. It's not bad the whole way down. Door opens and closes. So we're doing pretty freaking decent. I'll just give her a, Eyeball down the side, looks good to me. Said this one fender can drop down a little bit, but it's mostly in line. So I think we're gonna do, we're gonna open the door. We'll weld the, the front of the post in really well, top and bottom, push that in so it's all, it's all good. The post can, eh, you can go in just a little bit, but that'll pull the door in with it, obviously, cause it's, it's on a latch kind of deal. Oh yeah, the weld broke actually, so. Give that a push over. We'll have to zip that off a little, but that's fine. I mean, yeah, it'll be fine. On a on the two-door piece, obviously, it was quite a bit longer because the rocker is all one piece. Oh, someone's giving her out there. But once you get that locked in, then we can kind of mark what we want to do here. Be a little bit of screwing around, kind of eyeballing to figure it out. Um, I have done in the past. It's a lot of back and forth. I'd rather just suffer here, but you can kind of 
trace the backside, take it out and then cut it. But we'll just kind of wing it, see where we get and go from there. But pretty good, pretty, pretty good. So we'll set the camera up, get her welded. Well, I guess the GoPro got a little hot and shut off at the end there, but uh, she's all kind of tacked into place. There's lots and lots and lots of welding to be done yet, but we'll charge the batteries up, dump some footage, and we'll come back and probably have to trim this up a little. And then we'll have to section up that door, cut the bottom of it off, screw around with that, and we should be able to kind of tack it into place, and then we'll have ourselves a two-row one side, 56 Chevy. Well, we're back at it. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to square this up real quick. But uh, do a quick measurement. I'm going to section this door in half real quick. Hopefully I can get below the trim. And uh, yeah, we'll just get that piece off and just kind of tack her in there. And we'll see how it's all going to kind of fit. But for all, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's ugly, but... It works, the door closes. What else could a man want? And honestly, I just want to be done with this video. I've been working pretty hard, so. Let's cut this banana. I'm just taking a quick break because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I've got this panel sectioned and uh, and kind of just tacked on there. So I'm going to go on the back side and we can trace it and then cut it out. Now we're going to run into an issue where the door doesn't quite go to the, the rocker. Which obviously, I mean when this door would be on, uh, if you're right tight against this curve, you're going to be kind of pulling the door backwards. And when this thing was obviously built, it was meant to have a gap the whole way around. So you have to picture if the door was, you know, even in the opening, if you move it one way or the other, you're, you're, you're changing where the gap's going to be. 
in my mind the gap on the bottom is the easiest especially considering this is the rocker <laughs> so what i'll probably i'm doing is just we'll slice a section right off we'll just uh put a piece in the brake fold it and we'll weld that on uh down the road and then just zip it in there as well okay let's see what this looks like when we get it all cut out Well, if you squint just right, looks like a two-door. So everything is just obviously tacked together. I mean, it's it's not going nowhere. This is uh, this is what it is. I'm I'm actually pretty happy. I gotta say, I've done a few of these now, and this is starting to be one of the better ones. The uh, up in there has to be welded all the way through, but our gaps are all real tight. I mean, the weld drug, there's just paint stuff like that, but that can all just be welded up. Obviously, down there we'll have to make our our panel sh 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 up around there but otherwise i just kind of set this in there so you can get an idea clips are kind of broken on it somebody's a little rough taking it apart but there we have it now originally now this is you know you, you know the old dd speed shop brain here i'm all over the place originally i was like okay we're gonna do this i'll just kind of fog it black or something like that which i may still do but now if i actually take my time and kind of put it together i think i can weld that all in carefully Grind it all down, just kind of leave it. Put a little panel there, maybe primer it. This thing kind of reminds me, I hate the yellow. I hated the yellow. But now, it just kind of looks like a rotten banana and I kind of dig it, so maybe that's what we're gonna call this thing. The, uh, one of my favorite, it's 57 and it's a hard top Chevy, is Merlin, Merlin Johnson's. He's got this badass, and it's like tinted windows, and it's like different fenders or different colors, and like just patch panels and stuff like that. Now, of course, he's got like LS and air conditioning, and I'm sure it's mint and all those things, but just it's so cool how it's all these different colors. So, <laughs> I don't know, Pontiac doors tack welded on, stuff like that, but there we have it. I think what I'm gonna do now, oh, I want to show you this. This is all the garbage you end up creating when you're, you know, stripping cars down. Obviously, we have doors everywhere which we have to take care of i think for the inside what i'm going to do i like to try and be careful if i can take these door panels off and maybe fit them on here somehow and maybe just like you know add an extension of like balsa wood or just something stupid from the basement so it looks just ridiculous like we're doing this thing on the el cheapo right we don't want to spend any money um so anyway so i was saying next video i think this thing's been running terrible i uh, ordered a few bits and pieces i got a little obd scan tool because this one you actually scan, it'll tell you what's wrong with it, hopefully. Um, I had taken off the exhaust in the last video. I got some new metric nuts, so we can zing that back up, see if that fixes anything or not, but at the very least, wire in the OBD and scan the thing. I brought the scanner home uh, for the weekend, so we can do that and see what it kind of turns out with, and then we'll get on to the other side, but ready? I mean, come on. This is just kind of boring plane. It looks like a taxi cab. This side looks like a hillbilly went to a taxi cab and made it into a two-door. So that's clearly a win. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. People are always asking me to do these two-door swaps. I'm not doing it for you. I'm just not. It's a lot of labor. And if you want it done 100% right, I don't think anyone would ever be happy with the work I do. But I'll show you everything I do do. And I do it in this little garage with a China welder, a DeWalt grinder, and a bunch of zip discs and a sawzall you can do it too it's very simple um yeah 
that's it that's all for now thank you very much for watching subscribe below leave a comment share with a friend all those good things see if we can get this thing running and maybe uh back outside and give it a little wash you know i don't, I don't want to work on dirty cars <laughs>